Up to this point in the series, we've added a form on the home page where you can add some kind of query. And then if you hit enter, it moves you to the search route and then actually adds it here, adds it here, updates the title. And then last time we created a JSON file at search.json like this, that actually gets all the content from our post every time we build our site statically. So what we want to do now is when we type over here or when we land on this page, either way, we want to go ahead and grab that data and load it on the client's browser. So let me go ahead and minimize that and we'll close down several of these routes here. I just basically need the search route open. So what I want to do is upon listening to the event, I want to first of all, check to see if I've already downloaded it. I don't want to keep fetching that data over and over again. So we can do this in a few different ways, but let's go ahead and maybe just come up here and then we, let's have a let variable. We'll call this something like uh, search data. Now I'm capitalizing this because I'm showing that it's kind of like static data. It shouldn't be changing. We're going to query this once and basically every time they come to this page, if they haven't already downloaded this, then it will download it for them, but it only updates when we statically update our site. So it's not SSR or anything like that. So we're going to declare this and then update it. Now we do need another function to actually do this work. So I'm going to come in here and create a function. We'll call this something like fetch uh, search results. Now I'm going to both fetch that JSON file and then also process the results here. So I'm going to go ahead and add in my search. So I'll eventually call this with that search. Let's go ahead and const res, we'll await fetch, and I want to fetch my search.json. We'll say const data await res.json. Now let's go ahead and console log this right here. And I do need to make sure this is async right here. Okay, so now that I've done that, you'll see if I open up the, the local terminal here, if I actually call this, which I have not yet, let's come right here and let's call this and we'll pass in URL search params. You'll see that I actually get back all five of those. Where's this coming from? Well, it's coming from that search.json file. Now it's always a good idea when you're doing this to go ahead and wrap this in a try fetch. And let's move this up and add a catch option where we'll catch the error and then console.error the error. Now typically you also want to check to make sure that the network request is okay. So I could say if res.okay, if this is not the case, then I can throw a new error and I'll say something like something went wrong. Please try it again. So let's say I actually mistyped this here. Now I should get something went wrong. Please try again here. It just says there's no search results. Now this only shows in the console here. So I could actually update this as well if I want to. I'll leave that to you if you want to do that. But basically what I'm doing is fetching this, assuming that I get it, it will then return to me that data. And here I'm console logging it. Otherwise it will basically throw an error in the console. Now this works just fine on page load, but if I grab the same thing and I come down here because I'd also want to do the same thing whenever I start searching, right? So search term. And now you'll notice that every time I type, look, it's fetching data each time. And just to underscore that, if I come into the network and I click on fetch, you're going to see all these fetch requests for the exact same data. Let's see if I can actually get this to show. So there we go. And as I start typing, you're going to see that every time it's refetching all the data. So I don't need to do that. So instead, what I want to do is actually just double check, first of all, if I already have done that, if I've already pulled in that data. So I'm going to grab all of this and I'm going to say, hey, if there's no search data, then do all this. Now, instead of just console logging this, what I need to do is come inside here and set my search data to my data. Now, as I start to type, you'll notice that it does not refetch it because it already exists. So it skips all of this right here. Now there's another thing to think about, and that would be if I don't actually have a search term, I don't want to both do this and especially I don't want to process everything because that's expensive. So what I can do is also come in here and say that if the search dot length is equal to zero, then I can also just return out of here. So now whenever I've landed on the page or whenever I've typed, it's first checked to see if I have the data. If it doesn't, it fetches it. Once it's here, then it's basically kept in memory as long as they're on this page. Now, because I may rebuild and the data may be up to date, I don't want it to keep it in memory past that just why they're on that single session. Now, while it's fetching that data and processing it, I want to show a spinner. So let me come up top here and let's create another little thing right up here. We're going to call this spinner. And again, this shouldn't change. It's just going to be a string of HTML. And we can grab any icons, but let's go to like phosphor icons right here. And let's explore the icons. And we're just going to say like spinner. Instead of fill, I'll go like bold, something like that. And I'll go ahead and just copy this SVG. Let's paste it in here. And because it's an SVG, I can add a style tag. And inside the style tag, we're actually going to just do something directly on this SVG. So let's give this SVG a name. We'll call this spinner. And I'll just grab the spinner. And I'll set an animation spin one second linear infinite. And let's write those keyframes. So keyframes 
spin. We'll do it at 100% here. I want it to go ahead and transform, rotate uh, 360. Okay, so if we did that all correctly, let's come back over this way and let's go ahead and add that here. So as I'm fetching search results, assuming that there is an actual search, then what I want to do is update my results list in our HTML with that spinner. Now, I don't think we've gotten access to that yet, but if I come back up top here, you're going to see that I've got this search results list right here. So what I want to do is add an ID here. We'll call this results. How about search results? And let's go ahead and grab access to that. So I'm going to copy one of these things down. We'll do search results and search results. Now back inside our fetch, we'll say search results .inner HTML is equal to spinner. Now you can see that this thing should just keep spinning until my results show and I replace the inner HTML here with the content I get back. Okay, so that's all there is for this lesson. In the next lesson, we're going to look at Fuse.js. This is a fuzzy search library that's super lightweight, but allows us to do this kind of stuff on the client and we can query the data we've gotten back based on the user's input. I'll see you in that. I'll see you in lesson seven.